afternoon, everybody. Todd Middlehead, Weatherman here. We have a tropical outlook for you guys. It's going to be a very busy end of the month here and maybe an interesting start to the month as well. So definitely want to be watching this one very closely. Make sure you hit that share button as well. Because things are really starting to spice up at this point. So we're going to start out with the Atlantic. We're also going to talk about the Pacific, too, because it will actually have some relevance to what happens with the Atlantic as well. But starting out with the Atlantic, you can we've been talking about this area. You can see it right here. 60% chance now of cyclone formation within the next seven days. If you actually look in the top right corner here, you can actually see the satellite imagery that is showing what's going on over the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific right now very busy we have invest 96 over here that we're watching as well very low chance of that developing so i'm not too too concerned with this we still have the remnants of tropical storm gordon hanging around but there's very little chance of that developing however over here we have just recently got this to pop up here this is a new point of interest over here towards the eastern and central tropical atlantic towards the main development region there's now a 40 percent chance of development and no real certainty as to where this could go. Odds are this probably goes out to sea, but we'll go ahead and keep an eye on this nonetheless here because some models do push it pretty far out to the west here. So still need to be keeping an extra close eye on that region as well. Looking at the Pacific now, things are kind of interesting there. And it's this feature right here that I'm paying extra close attention to that's in the yellow. You would think the higher probability being at the 50% area here in the orange I will be interested in this, but I'm going to show you the model data here as time goes on. And I want you to watch what happens, especially once we look at the relative humidity model a little bit later. I'm going to bring it up again, but I'm just telling you, keep an eye on this little section right here. So switching back to the Atlantic, it's going to be a little bit of a wacky video here, but we'll let this run all the way from the beginning again. Here's our other two systems right here. And then right around this time frame here, this is this would be our area of interest starting to develop. You can already actually see it on the satellite here, starting to get going. So this may form a little sooner than expected. It's about Tuesday morning where we start to see a more organized low pressure area form based off of ensemble data here. So we continue to push on from that point you can see it begin to really start to take shape here. And all of these numbers here, these are low pressure, of course, that are next to our low pressure area. These are millibars. The lower the millibar, the stronger the storm. And all of these have dropped below a thousand at this point. So I would say at the very least at this point, we're dealing with a tropical storm. This is of course, by the time we get towards Thursday evening. So we probably, based off the look of this, will have tropical storm Helene from this storm system right here I would anticipate it making hurricane depending on how quickly it moves we could have a pretty strong hurricane as we continue to go forward here now as we get into Friday the concern would be for a landfall across the Gulf Coast particularly towards the Big Bend in Florida maybe the Panhandle at this point a lot of models showing favorability with that. But if you also look over here, you can still see some of these models also having this low pressure still over towards the Gulf. And that's why I'm kind of uncertain as to what exactly could happen with this. The longer time, of course, that it spins over the Gulf with the waters being as is, you can see that right here in the, this left-hand corner of the screen here. It's pretty freaking hot. So my concern is if something does develop here, that this could really flourish quickly and that could be very dangerous in regards to a landfall here not going to be as much time to prepare and what you may think the storm may be one day it could be something entirely different the next day so definitely need to be paying extra close attention shifting our attention back to the east now you could see that this storm system here starts to develop and like i said it makes it pretty far to the west here not all the models are pushing this out to sea like you would normally see of course, this is the end of the 10 day run here, but I find it interesting that we have multiple ensembles that are pulling towards the Antilles here. And some of these are really strong, by the way, too. So kind of a carbon copy of what we've seen with barrel earlier this year could be coming into play. Can't guarantee that that's going to be the case here. 
there's a nice little spread between the models as you can see but definitely something we need to be paying extra close attention to now taking a look at the environment over the region and this is something that i'm taking extra note of here is the wind shear here right now the wind shear towards the gulf pretty light and that's going to continue to be the case especially as we go forward there is a bit of an increase as we get towards thursday evening for shear probably on the northwest flank of that system once it should develop or should it develop it still hasn't formed yet so we are i was always taught not to uh, count my chickens before they hatch but in any case here there's going to be some wind shear that comes into play that might keep the storm relatively weak may keep it as a low end hurricane but i do think that this has a prime environment to strengthen i think the warm waters are going to be the driving force behind that now as we continue to go forward eventually we'll see this storm system make landfall and then after that watch what happens towards the Atlantic here, especially the main development region. Look at how the wind shear starts to lighten up there. Now, as I mentioned before, waters over the entire Atlantic are warm. It's not just the Gulf of Mexico. So with me seeing this, this is definitely making me raise a brow, especially with what we saw in the ensemble runs. So this needs to be monitored very closely as well. October historically is not known for being a super active month, but it can be pretty busy. And based off of what I'm seeing here, this could have the makings for a very busy October. I can't really think off the top of my head right now of a year that I can compare it to. I don't want to say anything like 2020 to scare anyone because that was a crazy month, but it's not out of the question that we could get a lot going on here. That being said, let's go ahead and switch over to the humidity here. And this is of course towards the mid levels of the atmosphere. Obviously we're looking for areas in the green, Areas in the brown are dry air, of course. Areas in the green are moisture. And we've been dealing with Saharan dust for most of the season. And this has kind of kept our tropical development at bay. But I've been noticing more and more in recent runs that Saharan dust is starting to kind of taper off a bit. So, of course, over towards where our tropical system is, we have a good bit of moisture. We do also seem to get some dry air trying to come into play towards the end of the month here. So I'm still watching how that will end up coming into play here. But maybe on the western side of the storm might not develop as thoroughly as what we would expect here. It could be a lot like how Francine ended up forming too. So kind of hard to say what happens with this. But let's avert our attention back over towards the main development region where we start to see more and more systems forming. We see a lot of activity coming off of West Africa. But watch towards the end of this model run here. We're not seeing as much in the way of Saharan dust. And that in particular is concerning to me. Like I said, with the wind shear starting to lighten up and less dry air coming into play, there's still some right here that could become a factor. But considerably less than what we've seen. That could be what we need to really get things going here proverbial dinner bell might be ringing for the tropics right now not trying to scare anyone but again definitely something that we're going to be paying attention to here and probably a lot of other youtubers and meteorologists alike speaking of which let's go ahead and take a look at our ensemble runs here now this is our first system but watch what happens here i'm going to stop it real quick so you can see this is where that little 30% area that we were talking about a little earlier comes into play, but watch the motion. It goes here and actually might be a factor with that other storm system developing. And the other interesting thing is you'll see it when we get into the relative humidity here in just a second. This actually ends up feeding additional moisture into the Gulf here because you can see towards the beginning of the run, there's a lot of dry air here. So this storm system forms, and I think with this trying to develop here, we end up getting a nice little surge of moisture. And then if you look towards the end of the run here, look back towards the Gulf again, a new system pops up here towards the end of that run, which is about maybe 14 to 15 days out. 
that's a pretty considerable storm by the way 976 millibars would be a very strong hurricane now of course this is only hearsay for me because it's 15 to 16 days out for a storm that has not even developed yet we did see a few runs on the ensembles here i'm going to go back just so we can just so we can uh get another look at that here of course we can only go 10 days out on this but there is new development right at the end of the run here so definitely something else to keep an eye on as well and then of course we have that other area over towards the eastern pacific it's going to probably hang out around the mexican coast here but probably be pushed out to sea at this point and the wind shear map is kind of indicating that anything that forms past this point from this point onward especially as we get towards 100 plus hours out it's really just going to end up being pushed out to sea nothing no real threats to land at this current point in time beyond that one little system towards the beginning of the run so that being said a lot to keep track of with the tropics make sure you are staying tuned hitting that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell also share share this video because there could be some major implications or ramifications i should say if we end up getting a big storm to form here especially if it stalls out and if what i'm thinking could happen in the main development region of the atlantic does occur here could be some big time issues ahead so that being said hope i'll see you guys in the next video until then enjoy the rest of your saturday it's been tired metalhead weatherman goodbye